Hi everybody, Dr. Mike here. We've all taken some form of anti-inflammatory or pain relief medication, but why do we take one over another and how do they work? First thing you need to be aware of is something called prostaglandins. These are chemicals in our body that play a multitude of roles, but are extremely important in producing pain, inflammation, and fever. Now, what I've done is I've broken down all the different types of prostaglandins into two major categories. Both categories promote inflammation, pain, and fever, as you can see. But what you can see in this category is that these prostaglandins are found predominantly in joints and can promote rheumatoid arthritis. And these prostaglandins reduce platelet aggregation. Platelets are fragments of cells that allow us to clot. So if we're bleeding, it allows for our blood to clot and stop bleeding. These prostaglandins stop that from happening. Over here, the prostaglandins allow for our gut to maintain integrity. This keeps our gut happy and healthy. And these prostaglandins do the opposite of the others. They increase platelet aggregation, so increase our likelihood to clot. All right, so the whole aim is to take drugs that can stop prostaglandins. Because if you stop them, you can stop inflammation, pain, and fever. Now we make prostaglandins from dead cells in our body. All of our cells are surrounded by a fatty layer which is fatty acids, and these fatty acids turn into something called arachidonic acid, and then this arachidonic acid needs to turn into these types of prostaglandins. In order to do so, it needs two enzymes. COX-1 creates this type of prostaglandins, COX-2 create these type of prostaglandins. All right, now let's look at the drugs that we take. Let's first start with aspirin. Aspirin inhibits both COX-1 and COX-2, inhibiting these types of prostaglandins. However, aspirin more so blocks type 1 or COX-1 prostaglandins. That means aspirin's good at stopping inflammation, pain, fever, but it reduces our gut integrity. That's why people who take too many aspirin can have gut lining issues. And it stops platelet aggregation, which means it inhibits clotting. This is one reason why individuals who have an increased likelihood for stroke or heart attacks may take aspirin once a day. All right, what about ibuprofen? Ibuprofen selectively inhibits both COX-1 and COX-2, which means it's great at stopping inflammation, pain, and fever, and also all those other prostaglandin effects. Paracetamol, also known as Tylenol, Tylenol, also known as Panadol. What it does is it blocks COX-1 and COX-2, but it's not very good at stopping inflammation, okay? So while it's good at pain and fever, it's not very good at stopping the whole inflammatory process. The last one, Salicoxib, known as Celebrex on the market, what you can see is it's the only uh, COX-2 selective inhibitor on the market, which means it stops inflammation, stops pain, stops fever. It's great for joint issues such as rheumatoid arthritis, but because it stops the in inhibition of platelet aggregation, it promotes platelet aggregation, which increases an individual's likelihood to clot, which may not necessarily be a good thing.